This is the clue chunk who I am, which means I can only unlock chunks by doing clue scrolls. Every clue scroll I complete, I get clue coins to buy any chunk I want. Last episode, you guys decided that we are going to unlock Guardians of the Rift, but I kind of miscalculated how many clue coins it took. <laughs> Enjoy the video. We figured it out, but it's a rough one. We still need 40 clue coins. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an important day for the clue chunk UIM. You guys have decided which new chunk we're going to be unlocking, and those chunks or that route is going to be the Taverly to Guardians of the Rift route. So the first thing we're going to want to do is unlock the road from Berthope to Taverly. That is over seven clue coins or easy clue steps unlocked right there and then because we also kind of jumped over this ditch in the last video at the end i don't know if anyone saw that but if you watched all the way to the end of that video i accidentally jumped over here and unlocked all the wildy tracks it's only fair to unlock this but we need to do that anyway for the enter the abyss mini quest now the problem is that i might have made a little lapse in my judgment um we need another 40 clue coins for this clue step because the Enter the Abyss mini quest requires three rune essence mines. We already have Wizard's Tower and Varrock, but we need a third. And we have two options, the Ardy Market or Yanil. And considering Yanil has a couple more extra clue steps, the decision is pretty easy. So we're unlocking Yanil next. So first of all, before we go get the 40 more clue coins that we need to unlock Yanil, let's go check out our new chunks. Let's go to Bertho. Let's walk into Taverly like we own the place, dude. All right, look at this. We can actually complete Witch's House. Do I have any t uh, runes? No, I don't. The more quests, the better, because I still need 32 quest points to enter the Champions Guild and get Champion Scrolls. So by the time we're done looking around here, I'm going to quickly complete that quest for some quest points. <gasps> Dude, we can also unlock Herblore. I don't know how I caught that so late, but we can actually unlock Herblore. That is actually huge. It's the only stat that I still had level one in the clue chunk. Dude, I'm too excited. You know what? We're doing that first. Four quest points for Witch's House. That is really nice. 16. We're halfway. Actually, halfway to Champions Guild. Let's go and lock Herblore. And there it is. Four quest points for this one, too. We're on 20 quest points. That was unexpectedly amazing. Three Herblore. We can now train and clean Guams and all that stuff. Pickpocketing hand members got actually pretty decent now 1100 total and everything we're zooming so what do we do now because now we have that issue of we need 10 rune crafting for the temple of the eye quest but we also need to complete the enter the abyss mini quest which gives us a bunch of rune crafting xp i actually even think that quest will give us 10 rune crafting so we need to unlock Yunil, which is another 40 clue coin, so I'll be right back. Oh, leather body. You know what I recently found? I've made leather bodies every single time, but apparently Tesselia literally just sells it. I've always been going to the cows and stuff like that to make one. I didn't even know Tesselia had those. But there you go, Charlie. And now we can drop the clue because we don't have Reldo. I did these two clues to have some infantry space for Bryophita, and then I completely forgot to open them. So right before we go in, I guess we'll just open them. Number one. Water runes, so that's no inventory space wasted, which I guess is good. And the easy clue is pretty terrible. Bryophita killed number, I think it's three or four. And we get, ooh, a rune medhelms. We do already have a rune full helm, though. But that's a really good elk. I guess that's the blood runes paid for that I barely used. <laughs> and we get a beginner clue. And it's Reldo, which I can't do, so the clue's going on the floor. 37 more clue coins to enter you nil. This is going to be an important one, ladies and gentlemen. If Brother Omad doesn't hook us up with a casket, we have lost our medium clue, unfortunately. Come on, the holy place. There are still balloons here. Is this going to be a medium clue casket or not? Three out of five. This is step number three. Oh, is it a back to back? Where is this? Oh, you're kidding me. It is only 10 clue. You know what? I bought it. <laughs> if this is not the clue now, though, I'm going to be real pissed at myself. This was way, way, way too impulsive. Come on, please, 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 please. Oh, yes, thank God. Thank God. Oh, okay. Worth. The second beginner clue, which means that the haul for today is one medium clue, two beginners, and two easies, and I will instantly open those because I kind of want to clear my inventory to go back into Bureau Puro. We did spend 10 clue coins. Uh, I couldn't help myself, but it was for 10 clue coins back. All these clues without any collection log slots will give us 10 clue coins again. So, I mean, kind of worth it. Technically a free chunk. 
I don't think that's how it works, but because I kind of did pay for it in time. Anyway, let's open. We're starting off with the beginner clues, which we haven't gotten the unique from in a while, and we're not going to get any now either. The two easy clues. Oh, the red fire lighters are still a unique, so that's an extra clue coin. Very useless uh, unique, but a collection lock pop up nevertheless. And the next easy is another one, Gothic's Robe Legs. That's storable in the POA, so we're loving that. 11 clue coins already now. And we still have the medium to go, but nice. All right, four guaranteed clue coins from this medium. Can we get the Ranger Boots? Ooh, a Gothic's page as the unique pop-up. All right, not useful, but five clue coins from that one. So 16 clue coins total, let's go. I am planning on from the next episode onwards, actually picking a stash unit and making that item that I need for that stash unit the goal for that episode. I have seen the comments of people saying, why are you not focusing on your endgame goal of finishing the stash units? I will start making that my focus from the next episode onwards, and we will be grinding for items inside of stash units. So that'll make it a lot more clear and we'll bring the focus back to our in-game goal. Careful now. Oh, wait, is this guy going in? Wait, hang on. This guy's got the scary... F Why did I just casually stroll in? Uh-oh. <laughs> he can actually attack... No, he can't attack me. He's only one level. The wilderness, what am I tripping about? Would aid for a level 88, one defense pure to show up? I'm already done, mate. Already done. <laughs> what a guy. Ooh, doable easy. Oh, shit, Taverly, guys. We just unlocked that. Nice. Putting the new chunk to use, baby. Ooh, potential. Yes, there it is. That's already done. How long does this take? Like 15 minutes for three beginners and three easies. We even got a grubby key, which unfortunately we have to drop, which sucks because there's some really good resources in that chest. But the Fort Dose dungeon and just Zaya in general is so far away on this account, unfortunately. All right, before we go back in, we got to clean up some inventory, and that means opening these two caskets that we just got. We did get a beginner and an easy left over. Oh, wait, no, I do have one step on this uh, beginner, so I do need to go and do that real quick. Let's hope we get a casket from it. Hey, there it is, casket number two. So let's open them here. Why not? Two beginner clues for 17 clue coins. Are we going to finally get a unique? No, we are not. 18 clue coins it is. And then the easy clue is also... Pure trash. Let's get back to Pura Pura. 30 more clue coins to get. I don't know if I like stacking up too many caskets. First of all, it's two inventory slots every time. And second of all, I've heard some complaints about people not enjoying the clue coin sound if it gets spammed in their face every time I open a casket. So with these many clues opened, it's constantly cling, cling. And maybe you guys are not like that. Let me know. But here's two more easy clues. And there is actually our first master clue. Oh my god. And it is in Lydia, so we do have to drop it. But it's cool to see that for the first time on the account. Yeah, see you later, master clue. The other one, however, is a unique, but once again, a not a collection lock slot. Hey, another hunter level. Those are probably the best things to see. 74 hunter will give us our best possible method of getting hard clues for a little bit, which is ninja implings. But take a look at the drop table of ninja implings. That is absolute gold in there. Unfortunately, that is six more levels. No, seven more levels even. Every hunter level gets us closer to that beautiful impling. Oh my god. All right. Before we go back in, we have one more easy on the ground. I'm going to keep that one. We do once again have two easy clue caskets. I'm getting really lucky with these steps and the back to backs and all that. So slowly but surely, we're creeping up towards 30 clue coins and we need 50. So here we go. There's a mob shirt, which is an elite clue requirement. So that's going to be really nice to have. I do believe you can store them in your POH and take them back out. And the second one is green fire lighters. All right, we've got another four easy clue caskets because we've got so unbelievably lucky with back-to-back -back steps. The account is actually equipped to grind the easy clues out. So we can finally maybe stop getting beginner clues or doing goblins or whatever. Even though it's kind of sad because I've killed 75,000 goblins at this point and I wanted to make a 100,000 video. But it feels like Grimae Implings is more worth it. We've been going for two hours or so and we've gotten over 19 clue coins if these easies don't give me any uniques. So Without further ado, let's get into it. Here we go. That is a terrible casket. <gasps> that is the completion of the ancient book. That is the completion of our first god book on the account. That is unbelievably lucky. However, Horror from the Deep, the quest requires the bar crawl mini quest, which takes over 200 clue coins. So we're not going to be able to make that for a very long time. But that is still insane. This means I can clean out the loading bag with these orbital pages too. That is so fast. 112 easy clues for a full 
And basically the best god book. What a time, dude. Oh my god. Next caskets are trash. But you know what? I don't care. We completed a god book this early into the account. Holy crap. Two more easy clue caskets before we go back in. We're almost there already. It is absolutely going berserk right now with the easy clues. Let's see if we can get another collection log spot. The Zamrak page three. We can comfortably drop that one though because we've completed a god book, by the way, by the way. And another one is uh, a couple law runes. I'll take it. From humble beginnings where I was always struggling with law runes. I can never complain about law runes again. Again, man. Let's go back in for the last seven clue coins. Two more easy clues. I was gonna say if we get an, a unique in... Wait, what do we need here? This is four. If we get three uniques in these two, we're done. Oh my god, that's a start. Wait, did we also complete the Arbital book now? Oh no, okay. We have two pages. That feels almost sad to drop it, but we only need one for the stash unit and eventually we'll get way more pages when we eventually unlock Horror from the Deep. Oh, we need two more uniques from this one casket to be done. Uh, yeah, that's not gonna cut it. But ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. We are going to be opening the two clues, or actually the one clue. It's going to give us 50 clue coins so we can actually go on with the plan of completing Entering the Abyss and making our way over to Guardians of the Rift. Let's start with the beginner, because that is always trash. And then the one that will put us over 50 clue coins. Oh my god, that's a disgusting one. But it does not matter. Where is Yanil? Double click that shit. We have unlocked another beautiful chunk. So the nice thing about Yanil is that it's got three medium clue steps. So that is slowly working our way towards the next level of the account. Two easy, three medium steps. It's way better than the other option, which was the RD square, which is two easies and no mediums. Uh, so yeah, Yanil is definitely the better option. And let's uh, actually go into our new chunk now. Now you will notice that I'm not going to be unlocking the, uh, the Yanil music track. It's because I've been teleported here by the Pilroy guard before, all the way at the start of this account. If you talk to that random event, you do get teleported teleported into one of these cages over here and you do unlock the music track so I'm sorry that I broke the account <laughs> very early into it but I didn't think it was that significant anyway let's see if we can actually enter the wizard's guild and use the runess's mine because that's the whole reason why we went into this place and there it is we can at least go in wizard descendry door there we go so enter the abyss is now completable there he is. Let's start the Enter the Abyss mini quest, which should give us, I think, 12 rune crafting or something. And then if I start Temple of the Eye, I might already have the rune crafting level we need for Guardians of the Rift. I don't think we're going to have to train much more rune crafting levels doing the Talisman and Air Tiara or Fire Tiara method, but we'll see. So there's Aubrey with the first teleport. Then Seridor with the second, which is also an easy Lumberjan Drainer diary task. And then the reason why we picked this chunk, Mr. Distentor. And we can go back now and complete the mini quest. This should be the quest completion, I think, right? Or do I have to go to the Abyss first? Oh, nope, there it is. 1,000 runecrafting XP getting us straight to 11 runecrafting. I think I need 12 for Temple of the Eye. Oh no, it's 10 runecrafting. We can actually go and do it, finish it, and start going straight to Guardians of the Rift. That's so sick. Oh no, dude. So many oversights by me. This is terrible. This is... <laughs> what is that tea seller doing over there? Are you kidding me? Well, luckily that chunk is only 20 clue coins. And I still got a couple of clues in the inventory. So let's get 19 more clue coins. That means we've already had to make 60 more clue coins than we originally intended for this. It's going to be worth it. It's going to be good. We like chunks. I just missed it, but this is a little milestone on the account. We just passed 10,000 minotaur kills when i want to afk or take that with a grain of salt when i want to somewhat semi afk clue scrolls i just tag all these minotaurs put auto retaliate on and then this way i can a little bit more chilly get clue scrolls it's pretty good all right i've cleaned up my inventory a little bit and now we've got seven beginners and six easy clues which puts us exactly on 20 clue coins even if we don't get a unique let's get started with the beginners and of course we're getting a cabbage first and everything else looks to be pretty trash. Eight clue coins. Let's get into the easies. Watch the first one be a unique. It's not. It's not even something we can use. I don't think there's another black axe clue stash unit because next episode, as I already said, we are focusing on the stash units, but we already have that one made so we can 
put it on the floor. Five more easy clues for a unique. The Oh, wait, I thought it was going to be the steel plate legs. It's actually both. The steel plate legs, watch this, is going to be another clue coin added. Look at that. Feldip Hills teleports and steel plate skirt. That Feldip Hills teleport is useful, though. If we take a look at the map, Feldip Hills, where is it? Apparently, it puts you in this tent chunk, which is actually kind of nice. You might be able to teleport there and then go to the Corsair Cove. I don't know if that's very useful, though. I don't think there's much for us in the Feldip Hills. The looting bag is also getting kind of full. Well, it's completely full, so I guess I'll just drop it. All right, four more. We're easily going to make it to a 20. But can we get another unique? That is gross. 16 law runes. That would have gotten me excited like 10 episodes ago. What is that easy clue? Oh my god, are these beginner clues? Ah, there we go. We get that black skirt G to finish it off. Very nice, 23 clue coins. Let's go and complete Guardians of the Rift, eh? All right, T-Seller, I'm coming for you. Unlock the chunk. All right, here we are. Let's do Guardians of the Rift. I know I just said that in the previous clip, but it sounds cool. So the beautiful thing about this quest is that you actually do a game of Guardians of the Rift. You basically play a tutorial and you actually train rune crafting here. So I wouldn't be surprised if I get from 11 all the way to 27 by the end of this quest. And there's already one level. There's 15 rune crafting. Wait, what? I just got three levels. 750 rune crafting XP. That's absolutely absurd for just feeding five <laughs> things to, the, to the, the Grey Guardian. Sorry, I couldn't talk anymore. I also just woke up, if you guys haven't noticed in my voice. So a couple of you guys have sometimes said that my voice sounds very different in certain clips. That's because I record most of the clips off stream in the morning. So the, the voice is very different. All right, here's going to be the exp I'm 21. The, the quest is not even done, and I'm 21 rune crafting. 27. There you go. So all you really need is 10 rune crafting to start the quest, and it'll put you straight to 27 to do the mini game. That's crazy. So guys, here we are, Guardians of the Rift. The next episode, I have a big goal for a very good clue item. I want to get the Ring of the Elements. The problem is my inventory looks disgusting, so we got to fix that first. And I feel like we could do that in the Ferox Enclave. See you in the next one. Once again, a massive shout out to all the channel members. And an extra big shout out to Jagex Me Up, HumorBot, and March3258. Channel members above Trailer Trash King do receive a 10% discount lifetime code on the merch if you guys still want to grab that. If you want to support me a little bit extra, click the join button below the video. Thank you for watching.